Hi, welcome to Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram. I am Akram. In this program, we'll be talking about all kinds of different issues, uh, health issues with different experts in the field. But today, we're going to talk about joint pain. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your time with us. Joint pain is a very common problem with many possible causes, but it's usually results of an injury or arthritis. Often it is transient and resolves on its own. However, when it persists, X-rays or more advanced imaging can help make correct diagnosis. Arthritis is a common condition that causes pain and inflammation in a joint. In the UK, more than 10 million people have arthritis or other similar conditions that affect the joints. Arthritis affects people of all ages, including children. We all know painkillers, physical therapy and surgery relieve most of the joint pain, but we need to be aware of modern aspects of medicine too. The improvement in radiology imaging to treat various ailments without knife is new aspects of medicine which we would like to talk about. Radiology has been around for over a century. It all started when Wilhelm Conrad Drongen discovered X-ray in 1895. Since then, radiology has evolved with modern technology into computer tomography, or we call it CT, or magnetic resonant imaging, MRI, and of course, ultrasound guided techniques. Interventional radiology therapies for joint pain include intra-articular injection, neurotomy and neuromodulation techniques, as well as transcathetra intra-arterial therapies. These therapies aim to control pain and inflammation, improve mobility and function, whilst the novel cell-based therapies have the potential for delay to surgery. Let's welcome our special guests on the show to learn what radiology has on store for joint pain, how they can help us with the debilitating condition and much more. Let's welcome Dr. Udara Kularatna, who is a consultant in radiology in a university hospital in Midlands. And also, let's welcome Mr. Mohammed Habad, who is a radiographer and of course he's a medical student as well. Uh, guys, Dr. Udara Kularatna, Udara, how are you doing today? Thank you very much for coming into our show. Me, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. And Mohamed. Thank you very much for having me. It's nice to have you here. Yes, it's very good. And you are sitting in the right place in front of my yes. Iron Man. I've got Iron Man, the bones. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's, let's, let, let's talk a little bit about you guys first. Okay, Udara. Um, well, You've been, an, uh, you've been an engineer for four years. Now you are a radiologist. How come this uh, jump? <laughs> yes, I'm a consultant radiologist uh, with a special interest in the musculoskeletal system. Uh, as children, we all have dreams about what we want to do when we grow up. When I was little, uh, I wanted to become a doctor, but uh, I liked maths in school and ended up studying engineering in university. Then I worked in industry for a few years. Where did you go to uh, university? Sorry, I, I was about to interrupt you. Because you went to a special place in university, isn't it? Um, I studied engineering at Monash University in Australia. And uh, when I went to med school, I went to Cambridge University uh, as a mature student. Excellent. Why radiology? What, uh, what, uh, what was the interest in radiology? Uh, radiology is uh, about solving puzzles uh, with using medical imaging and uh, I liked anatomy as a medical student and uh, radiology combined these two interests of mine and that's why uh, I naturally gravitated towards uh, radiology. Oh, thank you very much, Udara. It's, it's amazing. I think I, we were expecting you in our show, but unfortunately you couldn't be here for some reason. But Mohamed, let's talk about you, man. Yes. 
You are a radiographer? Yes, I'm a radiographer. That's so right. you've been working as a radiographer for two years, yes. that's right? Yes. And what made you to become a medical student? How did you do that? Like, oh, tell me about you, all, all about these stories. Yeah, so originally I'm from Somalia. Um, I did a three-year BSc at the University of Leeds in radiography. And then during my time as a radiographer, I felt that I wanted to pursue more, um, have a direct impact on patient care. So then I went to medicine at Anglia Ruskin. And that's where I am now. And how did you start your medical school? Did you have to do your special exams or you because of your... So I'm a graduate student, so I just had to do the common UK CAT exams, etc. Um, and then take the interviews like everyone else. So there is a way, even um, if you are a graduate student, you can always switch into medicine at there's, any time. There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Excellent, guys. And it's, it's amazing to have you both, but because you have something in common and you, you are in a kind of same department. Yes. And you also did different things uh, before you become, you're going to be, he's a doctor and you're going to be a doctor. Hopefully. Amazing. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, Udara, we'll go back to you. Now, let, let's talk about what does uh, radiologists do? What, what do you guys do? Yes, there are uh, two main aspects to what we do. Uh, first, we use medical imaging to diagnose disease. We use x-rays, CT, MRI, and ultrasound to look inside your body and figure out if there's anything wrong. Second, we use imaging to provide treatments more accurately. We use ultrasound or CT to guide treatments to exactly where it needs to be. So we work very closely with other healthcare professionals. We work with uh, radiographers, uh, physiotherapists, GPs, surgeons, rheumatologists, and help them diagnose what's wrong with their patients and provide image-guided treatments when necessary. That, you know, it's not, it's not the, the radiologist, not more x-rays, isn't it, anymore? So you guys do lots more in these days, isn't it? I think it's, it's in, the, in the general term, people, when you think about radiology, they think about x-ray, you know, the old x-ray, you go there, you, they put you under a machine and they get, bang, and they get a chest x-ray or something like that. It's not anymore, isn't it? What, what else do you do about it? Uh, exactly. Sorry, uh, was that question for Mohammed or myself? No, it's for you, I'm, I'm asking. Thank you. Um, the, uh, today we are very lucky. We have a very fancy kit. We have uh, computer tomography, CT, MRI, ultrasound. They, uh, you, you'll be amazed what kind of pictures they can produce off the inside of our body. We can uh, create 3D imaging, um, and all this uh, helps to uh, diagnose diseases and treat diseases far, far better than we used to be able to just with X-ray 100 years ago. Excellent. Moment, let me go back to you, man. Yes. Okay. Tell me what is a radiographer? We heard about a radiologist now. You are a radiographer now, yes. right? Yes. So a radiographer works in tandem with radiologists, hand in hand, but our job primarily is to produce the images. So your GP has sent you and you've got some back pain. And what we need to do is take an X-ray of your back. So we use a lot of anatomy, hands-on, and we put you in the correct positions to produce the correct images to allow the doctors to do what they do. So do you guys in, 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 your, in your radiograph uh, school, yes. do you learn about this anatomy and of all course. these things? So it's yeah? a three-year degree and throughout the three years you have anatomy exams, oh, you go right. to the cadaver yeah. labs, you do really in-depth anatomy teaching, physiology, um, physics as well, a lot of physics. So, so do you guys have to pay for the university or you get paid for that? Uh... So luckily when I went to university um, a long time ago, the radiography degree was paid by the NHS, so I came out with no debt. Currently, students that go have to pay, but also get a £5,000 uh, bursary. So bursary, I suppose. It's a very good option. It's a very good option, isn't it? Yeah. So in case uh, you are ready for medicine and in case you are very hesitant and thinking, what, what can I do? It's a good course to go for radiograph, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is, guys, this is a live program, so you can call us on uh, 0203 515 5788 if you have any questions or suggestions, or write to us, healthtalk at intv.co.uk, or you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram, and of course, uh, you, um, 
if you have if you haven't subscribed to our dedicated YouTube channel health talk with dr. Akram please don't forget there are lots of things there all right and uh, let's follow up our program today we're going to talk more about joint pain and how we're going to tackle this joint pain with radiology we have two specialists and dr. Udara Kularatna he is a radiologist and uh, Mohammed he is a radiographer so they're going to bring their expertise into the show and you, of course you can bring your questions forward okay let's go back to Udara. Udara let's talk about musculoskeletal radiology it's a big name okay I know it's a mouthful, isn't it? Uh, at this point, I must I must uh, shout out to my radiographer friends uh, as <laughs> Mohammedis as well, because uh, my job will be impossible without their help and their support. Uh, so we are like uh, lock and key. We work together. Um, and it's, it's all about teamwork. And uh, it's great to have a, a radiographer colleague uh, in this uh, program as well. Musculoskeletal radiology, we use medical images, imaging to look at bones, joints, and muscles in our body to figure out what's causing symptoms. We help diagnose and treat sports injuries, back pain, aches and pains in muscles and joints and other very common conditions that a lot of us suffer from. And I think musculoskeletal radiology, this is my personal view, musculoskeletal radiology is the most exciting branch of radiology. Excellent. That's, that's amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's um, I think for a lot of people, it's, it's a kind of new thing, isn't it? And uh, this is something, a new, is it a new emerging uh, medicine or is it been there for a while or uh, how long it's been? been there, it's been there for a very long time. I mean, you mentioned how x-rays uh, came into being. The very first x-ray was of a hand of the person who invented, the person who invented x-rays was Wilhelm Röntgen. He x-rayed his wife's hand, and that was the very first x-ray. So radiology first was used to look at bones and fractures. And uh, so musculoskeletal radiology has, is as old as radiology itself. And today we have far more powerful tools uh, to help diagnose and treat uh, our, the problems our patients have. That's amazing. And, and I know I have seen one of some of your 3D imaging that looks like our Iron Man, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's exactly you could see all the uh, structures in, in a 3D yeah. fashion. That's, that's, that's really amazing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about joint pain. What can you guys do for joint pain um, as a radiologist? Usually we, they, they, they go to the surgeon to, for. Yes, so um, as you know, joint. Uh, joint pain um, has many causes, uh, either injury or arthritis, uh, and most cases of uh, joint pain does not need imaging. Uh, only in selected cases, when uh, your doctor uh, wants to figure out exactly what's going on and uh, conservative therapy has uh, failed to give uh, pain relief or symptom relief, that's when radiology helps to figure out what else is going on. Uh, obviously, for if, if you had an injury and you had a fracture, then an x-ray will help diagnose the fracture and also how bad it is, whether it's displaced or not. Uh, but there are other things surrounding a joint. There are lots of soft tissue structures like ligaments, tendons, muscles. Uh, if a problem with them is suspected, then something like an ultrasound scan or an MRI scan can help to diagnose what's going on. Okay, when we uh, suspect one of those symptoms, you said, can a patient come to you guys straight away or they have to go through uh, any other channel? Do they have to go through somewhere? Um, in, in the UK, the first port of call is your GP. Uh, so normally joint pain, thankfully, uh, bone and joint pain, uh, the most common variety of it usually goes away with conservative treatment that you can do yourself like um, over-the-counter medication, resting, ice packs, heat treatment. Uh, if that doesn't work, you can go to your GP and uh, the GP will examine you, take a good history and then uh, either give you some medication or uh, ask you to uh, do some exercises or some physical therapy. And if those things fail and your GP suspects further problems, 
uh, with your joints or soft tissues in around the joints, then your GP might refer you for imaging. So that's the normal pathway for uh, someone with uh, joint or back pain. So we treat back pain in radiology. What are some causes of, of back pain, generic causes yeah, in your practice, Dr. Odara? Yes, so uh, back pain is um, extremely common. So uh, one in four of us will get it at some time of our lives. Um, and uh, it's the most common variety of back pain is due to uh, ligament or muscle sprains. And this is the type of back pain that will that can go away in six weeks or so with conservative treatment. Um, but if the uh, pain doesn't go away, uh, you have neurological symptoms like uh, your, you have pins and needles or uh, you have uh, difficulty standing up, difficulty moving. Uh, that's when um, we suspect other things like, for example, uh, whether there's a, there's a slipped disc um, irritating a nerve, uh, whether there's infection going on rarely. Uh, so that's when uh, medical imaging can help to figure out what's going on. Okay. So, I think that's what we, we usually, isn't it? When they have a back pain, people yeah. worry about, is it, oh my, it's a, it's a slip a disc. disc. Yeah. <laughs> they worry about it. How common is a slip disc, Udara? Uh, it's not very common. Uh, usually about 4% uh, of people presenting with uh, low back pain will have disc related pathology so it's not very common okay okay and you spoke about some symptoms there um, of back pain but what are the worrying symptoms that people should look out for yes Mohammed. so um, if you have back pain and several other symptoms yeah. uh, that you need to be aware of are uh, i mean if you have back pain with these symptoms okay. then uh, you need to see a doctor for example Yep. If you have difficulty passing urine or loss of bladder or bowel control, if you have numbness or tingling in your genitals or buttock area, if you have loss of power in your legs, or if you have pain that runs down the back of both legs, if you're feeling unwell with the back pain, you have fever and night sweats that wakes you up at night, or you have weight loss and loss of appetite, and we, we call these red flag symptoms. These are rare but you should contact a doctor if you experience these symptoms with back pain. Okay, so how urgent is that, Udara? Do they have to call an ambulance or they have, to, um, they, can, they have time to go through the GP? Yes, I think um, depending on how soon they come on. So uh, if, you, if you have a sudden loss of uh, bladder and bowel control or a sudden weakness of both legs or tingling down both legs, then you can first try contacting your GP uh, or you can call 111 and uh, they can advise you or you can go on online and they will sometimes, they might even advise you to go to A&E because um, uh, you want to make sure there's nothing serious that's causing those symptoms. While we're talking, let's, uh, let's get ready with a video as well. This is it's mostly how um, we can treat back pain in such a way. Uh, until we get ready, we keep talking about it. This video say, is kindly provided by OACM Orthopedics and you could always go and watch this uh, on YouTube if you want to see more. Anyway, thank you for that. Um, let's go and uh, watch the video. Facet injections, also referred to as facet blocks, are non-surgical treatments that use medication to relieve pain and inflammation in the facet joints of the spine. Facet injections are also used for diagnostic purposes to determine the source of pain. Except for the first two, a pair of stabilizing facet joints connect each of the bones in the spine. The bones are called vertebrae. The facet joints allow spine motion. Facet joint pain can be caused by a variety of spine conditions, such as arthritis and other degenerative disorders. Depending on the location of the affected facet joint, 
Pain can spread to the neck, low back, and buttocks. You may be a candidate for facet injections if you have spine-related pain that is not relieved by conservative treatments. Facet injections are outpatient procedures. To begin, the injection site is sterilized and numbed. Your doctor will use a live x-ray to guide the injection needle to the facet joint capsule and the pain relieving medication is delivered. You will be able to walk immediately following the procedure but should take it easy for the next few days. If facet joint injections are successful for you, the procedure can be repeated. Uh, thanks a lot OAC, uh, OACM Orthopedics for that amazing video, it's on YouTube, anyone won't, won't have a, a, a look, you can have a look. But anyway, uh, let's continue with our talk, um, what's it Mohamed that we were talking about? So yeah, in the Dr. Odari spoke about previously about how facet we don't really are also do many x-rays and investigations for back pain. How do we diagnose Except back pain? Except for the first two, a pair of stabilizing yes. facet so, uh, connect each of the you're bones absolutely right. Um, the bones are uh, Mohammed, called vertebrae. Uh, the most common type the of back pain, which is caused by motion. muscles and uh, ligament sprains, uh, doesn't show up on uh, any, any form of imaging. Uh, X-rays also are not particularly useful with uh, back pain uh, unless you suspect a fracture. Um, in, a, in someone with weak bones, such as uh, an elderly person with osteoporosis uh, who has back pain, uh, then X-ray will be uh, helpful to uh, figure out if that's a fracture. Uh, in uh, If a slipped disc is suspected, an MRI scan will be very useful uh, to uh, to demonstrate that. Yeah. Uh, and, and less than 1% of low back pain has a serious cause like infection or even cancer. And this can be uh, picked up with MRI scan. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, we are talking about uh, uh, joint pain, but we are talking more about the radiological aspects of uh, how we can treat it radiologically rather than knife. But we're going to go for a quick short break, and after short break, we'll be talking more about uh, um, joint pain, especially uh, we're going to concentrate on the knees and hips. And by the time we're going to join a caller as well, just before we go to the break, and uh, during the break, we'll talk to the caller and we'll come back. Hello, sir. Welcome to the talk. Hi, yes, I was, I'm holding the line to talk to the doctor, please, if possible. Uh, thank you very much. We're going to go for the break, but you could uh, put your question forward, but we'll, uh, we'll go through it. And uh, during right. the break, we'll analyze and we'll come back to you. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. My, um, I have knee arthritis. What's your name, sir? Where are you calling from? Uh, from High Wickham. High Wickham, excellent. What's your name? Uh, Siri Mavan Chaminda. Oh, Chaminda is all right. Okay. Thank you very much for calling. Uh, uh, sorry, I couldn't get your first name. Siri Mavan, Siri Mavan. S I R I. You can call me Siri. Siri, thank you very much for calling. Okay, go ahead with your question, please. So I have bad arthritis in my knees. So my doctor gives me uh, steroid injections, but um, the problem is the effects wear off very quickly. Um, so I want to know how many steroid injections I can get because my doctor seems to also does not know. He sometimes says three weeks, he sometimes says three months and four weeks. So I want to know how often I can get the injections. Thank you very much for that, um, that call, um, uh, uh, Siri. Uh, where do you have arthritis, just to make it a bit clear? In my knees, knees, knees. On your knees, yeah? Both okay. Knees. Okay, Udara, this is uh, uh, Siri calling, and he's got arthritis on his knees, and he's on st steroid injection. Probably you heard the question, and he has um, had many times, and he wants to know how effective or how long will it last. Yes, uh, thank you, Siri, for your uh, excellent question. Um, you're absolutely right. So when uh, you have pain with uh, your knee, your doctor will give you uh, 
if other forms of treatment have uh, have not worked or have not helped a steroid injection uh, is one way of controlling the pain uh, now normally uh, we only give steroid injections either two or three times per year because um, if if the knee uh, pain goes away for long enough, for example, if it goes away for six months, then it's worthwhile having another injection because that can delay any eventual surgery that you might need. But if the uh, injection only takes away your pain away, takes your pain away for three weeks, for example, then having another injection is unlikely to have a long lasting effect. So that's probably why your doctor is reluctant to give you injections more often. Um, if Thank you, doctor. Doctor, can I ask another question, please? Yeah, please Certainly go see. ahead, yes. So, doctor, um, I, I am from High Wycombe. Um, so I just want to know, these, can these steroid injections hurt, I mean, damage my knee joint? That's Correct. a very, so, very, very good question, isn't it, Udara? He wants to know whether steroid injection repeatedly given into the, the knees will it destroy the knee? Absolutely. So uh, what we have to remember is any medication, if we take it too much, can be bad for us. So that's why we do not give steroid injections uh, more than two or three times a year. So you're absolutely right. We have to be careful. Too much of steroid can be harmful as well. That's why we need to balance the benefit you get from the risk of, with the risk of causing further damage. And that's why we limit the number of uh, times that you uh, can get an injection. Thank you, Doctor. Very helpful. Thank you for helping poor Siri Mavan Chaminda. Siri, you. before you go, uh, are you happy with the answer? Yes, that doctor and thank you very good. much, Siri. I want to tell you, um, this video will be uploaded into YouTube, Health Talk with Dr. Akram. Keep an eye on it and uh, you can always comment there. And if you have anything further, we will always come back to you on the comment section on, under the video. And um, you can be anonymous if you want and uh, we will try to help you out throughout. Thank you very much, doctor. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, we're going to go for a quick short break and we'll see you back afterwards and we're going to talk more about joint pain and uh, radiology. Thank you very much. Hi, welcome back to our Iron's Health Talk, Dr. Akram. Today we are talking about joint pain, especially the radiological uh, aspects of it, how we can treat it with novel treatment, radiology. And uh, our special guest, Dr. Udara uh, Kuloratna, he, is, he has joined us via Skype. And um, Mohamed Habad is uh, an ex radiographer and uh, of course a medical student. Uh, he is here with us uh, with the expertise. Mohamed, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about this um, uh, role of uh, radiology back pain. What do you guys do with this? Yeah. So as a radiographer, we, we can help the radiologist um, treat back pain. So this can be in the form of CT guided procedures or even fluoroscopic procedures. So as the radiographer, what you're providing is live imaging to the radiologist so they can pinpoint exactly where they need to go. This makes treatment more effective for the patient and has a higher success rate than simply trying to use anatomy to guide the procedure. Rather than going blindly. Rather than going blind, you have an error. And that, that's what we showed in the video as well, isn't it? We had that animation video. Exactly, they were pinpointing that place where you have that particular pain yeah. and they go and treat it, they inject this. Um, so they can find a specific nerve root, for example. Nerve root. And help. Caller. Okay, let's, uh, there's a caller joining with us. Hello. Good evening, sir. How are you, sir? Good evening. Thank you very much. What's your name, sir? Shafiqul Alam Shafi calling from Burnley. I'm happily... Shafiq, uh, where are you I calling from? Burnley, Lancashire. Burnley, excellent. Thank you very much. Go ahead with your question, please, Shafiq. 
I think we uh, we missed the caller. Udara, let's go back and talk about a little bit about radiology and uh, back pain. Certainly. Uh, uh, specifically, uh, um, the treatments that we do, um, as um, uh, Mohammed uh, said, um, we do the um, uh, guided injections under either CT or fluoroscopy, and that's where, where uh, the expertise of our radiographer colleagues uh, help us. Um, the patient usually, as you saw on the video, the patient usually lies face down on the examination table, and uh, we give local anesthetic uh, to numb the skin. Uh, then we'll use the imaging to guide the needle tip to uh, a position near the nerve root that is being irritated by a bulging disc or a, a, a slip disc. A mixture of steroid and local anesthetic is then injected around the nerve root. And it's a very straightforward and safe procedure when done at a specialist center by uh, trained uh, professionals with the help of uh, our, our expert uh, radiography colleagues as well. So these procedures you could do by uh, CT guided, is that right? Computer tomography or MRI? Uh, is it MRI or what else? You do? Normally, we usually uh, do them under CT, CT or fluoroscopy. Guided, yeah. uh, or fluoroscopy. I personally yeah. do them under CT. Okay, let's... Uh, but there are many uh, doctors who do it under fluoroscopy as well. Okay, can you explain a little bit about this fluoroscopy? I don't think many people know about fluoroscopy. Exactly. It's, it's exactly the same as uh, a normal x-ray. Uh, with a normal x-ray, you just have a snapshot of your chest or your hand or your knee. Uh, but with fluoroscopy, you can get continuous images. So, if, for example, if you're inserting a needle into, uh, say, a joint under fluoroscopy, you can actually see the needle going in. Uh, so it's almost like uh, X-ray vision, basically. So is into it, someone's... I think you, you are telling like it's a, it's a, it's a normal uh, camera, you take a snapshot, and a video camera, you take a whole, uh, the process, yeah? It's something similar. Absolutely. It's Very like okay. a live <laughs> video camera seeing through your body but Absolutely. see through your body that's amazing isn't it that's uh, that, that that's really uh, interesting Udara. i think it, it, it probably will be really useful for our viewers who are there and uh, who has this kind of conditions and for them to know what we could do more for their problems isn't it Okay, Absolutely. let's talk, let's go ahead and we talk a little bit about hips and knees. Uh, a lot of people have hip knee pain. Mohamed, you would have seen a lot of people uh, coming to you guys yeah. with hip knee pain and they want x-rays and st stuff. Yeah, yeah, so we have, we have a lot of patients that come in with knee pain and hip pain, generally due to osteoarthritis. And then we provide generally standard x-rays, AP and lateral, which means the front of your knee and the side of your knee. This allows your radiologists and surgeons to have a look to see if your knee is in good condition or not. Okay, Dara, what do you guys do? Uh, what can you do more for this uh, this joint pain uh, rather than uh, plain X-rays? Uh, uh, are there any novel treatments these days? Exactly. Uh, first, I think uh, X-rays play a role in diagnosis, as uh, Mohammed said, uh, of osteoarthritis. But uh, as we discussed earlier, there are f a lot more structures around the hip, uh, like ligaments, tendons, muscles, and within the joint uh, itself, there are uh, cartilage, cartilage, okay. cartilaginous structures which keep the uh, joint together. Uh, so, problems with these are seen in MRI. So MRI, MRI scan can tell you if uh, there are muscle problems around the hip joint or uh, ligament or tendon problems. Uh, and um, that, that gives us the answer about what's going on, what's causing the hip pain, much, much more information than an X-ray would. And in terms of treatment, again, uh, your, your uh, doctor will prescribe first uh, conservative measures like uh, oral uh, analgesics, uh, an exercise program, and if they fail, then uh, they might uh, suggest an injection into the joint. Um, and this can work in two ways. The injection first will give you pain relief, symptom relief, and if the injection gives you pain relief, then uh, then the um, we know where exactly the pain is coming from because it was a targeted injection under image guidance. Uh, so if 
down the line a surgeon wanted to do something about it, then uh, their confidence increases as to where exactly the pain is coming from because the injection works as a diagnostic procedure as well. To, to make it short, I think x-rays shows uh, the bones, is right? Yeah. And the MRI exactly. is more for the soft tissues like muscles, tendons, is that, is that right? Can you explain a little bit more about the MRI, what does it do? Absolutely. So uh, MRI uh, uses a mechanism where uh, the MRI is a huge magnet and uh, it, uh, it picks up uh, different signals from different tissues in our bodies uh, and it depends on the water content of different structures in our bodies and uh, because different structures like muscles, tendons and bone have different water content, the MRI will show these structures clearly and separate from each other uh, and that's why MRI is able to show these structures very clearly uh, for us to identify any problems with them. Right, so that, that explains more about the injections you do because when you do under MRI guidance you could see those structures, not the bones which is uh, around the tendons and all these things and um, of course you could target them and inject them, isn't it? Exactly. Normally uh, MRI is used, used for diagnosis whereas for treatments we use ultrasound or we use CT because uh, as you know MRI is a big magnet so we don't want to go uh, near it with metal needles. Oh, yes, uh, of so, so the treatment is given with either X-ray, CT or ultrasound. But there are some MR compatible needles now coming to the market and sometimes they can be used to uh, guide needles under MR. But that's not common practice in the UK at the moment. In the UK at the moment. But of course, yeah, that's good. That's good. So what can you do for, for, for example, for knee pain? Um, do they do more than injections or what uh, else can you do? Uh, yes, so uh, there are, um, I mean, there are different types of uh, substances that you can inject into the knee uh, other than uh, steroids or anesthetic. Uh, for example, hyaluronic acid or there are various uh, types of um, chemical substances that can be injected. But we have to say there's very little evidence that these things work. Yes, there is right. anecdotal evidence that they work, but very little uh, accepted um, medical evidence that they work at the moment. Uh, so uh, steroid and anesthetic injections are at the moment used for purely pain relief, not to uh, not to really um, as a treatment. It's as a, for as pain a, relief mainly. That's true. As a treatment, isn't it? So steroid is, is still as a pain relief uh, rather than the treatment, isn't it? And uh, as, uh, as our caller, I think uh, Mr. Siri Chaminda asked earlier in the in the program that uh, uh, how many times can you inject this steroids uh, per year, Udara? This is really important. A lot of people ask for steroid injection. They come uh, repeatedly and uh, sometimes you have to refuse it and they get angry and they, oh, they got annoyed because they don't understand this uh, why why can't you inject more absolutely so uh, in my in our practice we normally inject we don't normally inject more than three times a year uh, and again for them to have a, a repeat injection the first injection must have given long enough pain relief and and the people the the patients that we select for injections are people who do want to have surgery or want to delay surgery uh, and and the reason we don't uh, give steroid injections more often is uh, that as we discussed earlier can they can be harmful and cause more harm than good uh, if given more often that, 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 that's the point, isn't it? That's why we don't give, even though the steroid gives a good pain relief for that short period, but you can't give it for a long time. And uh, as a radiologist, when do you think, uh, like if you had a patient there and you kept keep injecting, when do you think uh, that uh, you are asking for help from the next level, maybe a surgeon or maybe from other department? 
Yes. Normally, the, the patients who come to us are either referred by surgeons because the patient can't have surgery, for example, because of other medical conditions, or they want to delay uh, having a knee replacement or hip lip replacement. Uh, they don't want to have it when they're young, so they want to delay it as much as possible. So they refer the patient to us, and if the patient has a good response, then uh, they uh, re-refer the patient to us for repeat injections within a reasonable time interval. But uh, if uh, the patient doesn't have a uh, good response to the injection or the, the pain relief doesn't last long enough, then they might then go on to uh, uh, offer them surgery. Are there any way that you could treat these guys, these, uh, these patients, and they can, you can like cure them or you can send them home uh, and they don't need surgery afterwards? Mm. So, regenerative medicine, is that what you're asking about? Uh, yeah, and in, in generally in radiology with these injections and yeah. stuff. So, Dr. Adara, is there a future for regenerative medicine in in uh, musculoskeletal radiology? I think there is uh, osteoarthritis is a huge global health burden. So there are loads of research happening around the world, particularly in America and also in the UK. There, there's uh, something called the Osteoarthritis Initiative, which is funding a uh, lots of research into. Um, figuring out how we can regenerate the cartilage that's damaged in osteoarthritis. Uh, so, but these are unfortunately at present are in uh, an experimental stage at the moment. I'm sure in, in the future when, when these treatments come on board, musculoskeletal radiology will play a huge role in delivering these, uh, these treatments to the correct location within a joint. You know, they, they, they always we think uh, like olden days we didn't have many people with all these uh, arthritic problems. Is, is the arthritic, arthritis, is, is, is it more in these days or is it we are living too long and we get, all, we get into trouble? I think uh, you beat the nail, nail on the head there because um, the arthritis, osteoarthritis particularly is a, is a degenerative process and the longer we live, the, the more damaged our, our bodies, uh, our joints become. And that's why we see uh, the prevalence of uh, arthritis uh, more and more these days, because we live longer. Yeah, that's, that, that's really impo uh, interesting. Udara. Even I was, when I was reading uh, for this program, I have realized that even dinosaurs had arthritis and certain dinosaurs. And uh, our ancestors, yeah, in Egyptian, some mummies, they found arthritis as well. Wow. Uh, yeah, especially goat arthritis was common in uh, e Egypt as well. So, <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about... Uh, so, Dr. Dara, so I've done many x-rays for shoulder pain and frozen shoulder. Um, how does MSK radiology come into um, shoulder pain? Yes, so um, if you talk about the causes of shoulder pain as well, um, shoulder pain that comes without injury can be due to several causes. Uh, so pain and stiffness that lasts for several months may be due to frozen shoulder, a process where the joint capsule becomes too tight, so any movement becomes painful or pain that gets worse while uh, you're using your shoulder could be due to impingement. <clears throat> impingement is when a tendon in your shoulder rubs against bones or other soft tissue structures around it. Uh, and if there's sudden severe pain or locking after an injury, that may be due to a ruptured tendon or a dislocated shoulder. So how does radiology help? So, of course, uh, if you have an injury and the shoulder locks and uh, uh, dislocated shoulder is suspected, an X-ray can help to show that. But if there is uh, any soft tissue problems, for example, if you are suspecting a tendon tear around the shoulder, an ultrasound scan help can help to uh, identify which tendon is torn, how badly it's torn, uh, and if you are suspecting frozen shoulder, then MRI scan helps uh, to figure out what's going on. Uh, MRI scan is kind of the gold standard for shoulder pathology, but because it can show both soft tissue problems and bony problems that may be causing pain. Shoulder problems are quite common, isn't it? Very common. We, uh, is, it, is, is, is it more to younger people uh, shoulder problem than uh, the knee and hip problems are to um, the elderly crowd? 
I think we have uh, uh, we have two separate cohorts. We have people who are very active, for example, uh, cricketers or tennis players or, or people who use their arms very well, like painters and decorators. They get um, they get shoulder pain, uh, shoulder symptoms due to overuse sometimes. So overuse. repetitive minor injury over a long period of okay. time can uh, can cause damage to uh, ligaments and tendons around the shoulder. That's one end of the spectrum. The other is, as we discussed earlier, degenerative change. So the shoulder joint itself can become osteoarthritic. There are other joints around the shoulder, like the acromioclavicular joint, that can become uh, osteoarthritic, and that can cause pain. So we have these two, uh, two uh, peaks almost of uh, presentations okay. uh, with shoulder symptoms. That, that, that's quite interesting, and we do lots of uh, shoulder arthroscopy. Remember, I think you have seen in the in uh, in, in theatres, yeah. you know, in orthopedics, uh, yeah. and um, we put these uh, cameras, these yeah. cameras, and have a look and we wash out, and uh, then sometimes they treat it as well. Uh, is, is a, as a radiologist, do you do injections to shoulder, or do you do anything more, a radio radiologist, Sudhar? Absolutely. So um, the. Um, for example, if you take frozen shoulder, uh, we do injections under ultrasound guidance to treat it. And if, if you have any other problems, for example, if you have bursitis, uh, if you have uh, acromioclavicular joint problems, uh, again, these are all amenable to um, image-guided injections. And I must say the vast majority of these injections are done blindly by your GPs or rheumatologists, and they work really well. And in the rare instances, where they don't work uh, if done uh, blindly, that's when they are referred to radiology for the injection to be done under uh, image guidance. So, yeah, I think as you say, it's, it's, uh, what when you guys do is quite accurate, isn't it? You know where you're going and uh, you see with ultrasound or other imaging. That's right. Let's summarize a bit to that. Uh, like, uh, like I want to give our viewers a small summary of what we did today, what we talked today. So in case this condition come, they can go to help for the next level where the GP and they could they could they could wait and see uh, what the GP says about it and and the correct path to go ahead to reach you guys or the surgeon. Exactly. So the first port of call, uh, actually, that you start with uh, treatments that you do yourself, for example, hot and cold packs, oral uh, analgesia. And then if that doesn't work, you go to your GP uh, and uh, then the GP might refer you to specialist treatment, either a musculoskeletal interface clinic or uh, a, a surgeon, a rheumatologist or a physiotherapist to uh, help with your symptoms. And uh, and sometimes if your if your symptoms are bad enough, for example, you can't move your joint at all or you have fever with it or uh, if it's a knee, for example, you can't put weight on it or you feel unstable and the knee gives way, then you shouldn't wait. Then you should seek uh, medical help sooner uh, rather than waiting for it to get better because there may be some underlying issues that need treatment uh, quickly. Of course, we can't forget about the infections as well, isn't it? It's not only we talk about arthritis because these, these joints get uh, infections as well. Just like any body Abs part. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. They are rare, but that's why it's important if, if the joint is hot, red and swollen. Uh, and uh, it's usually a one, it's one joint that is affected and uh, you have fever with it. That's when we suspect, and particularly in patients with diabetes uh, or someone who has had an injection into the joint previously and then it has uh, swollen up and is red and hot and painful. That's when you suspect uh, some uh, infect infective process going on. And for example, if you have multiple joints involved, for example, multiple joints in your hand, then it may be an inflammatory process like rheumatoid arthritis. And then your uh, treatment pathway is slightly different. You'll be re referred to rheumatologists who will uh, start treating you. That's a good point what you said actually. It's, uh, it's, it's just to make clear, like if it's one joint, it's red, it's painful and uh, and then you have fever, other symptoms, and that's more likely it's an infection, and that's kind of urgency, isn't it? You can't wait with it for too long. But if correct. You, yeah, correct. 
Yes. And also, uh, if the, a red hot joint can also be due to due to gout, for example, if it's in your big toe in the in your if it's a big toe that's affected, that's a very common place for gout to appear. And again, that is red hot, very painful, uh, and uh, that's how gout presents. But infection also, it'll be usually one joint red, hot, painful, and you might have fever as well. Thank you very, for very much bringing uh, goat into it. I had uh, developed goat about about a month ago, <laughs> and I had gone through exactly what you said. And uh, of course, there is a video in Health Talk with Dr. Akram YouTube, all about goat you need to know. Wow. Uh, Udara, and we got a few more minutes left. Mohamed, can you uh, say a few words before we wrap up this program? Okay. So, uh, as a radiographer, we circulate the hospital, we work in A&E, MRI, CT, um, and we are generally the guys behind the scenes, um, we're providing live imaging, we're providing all the behind the scenes actions to allow doctors to treat patients. So, not many people know about radiographers, but we are there, always 24-7 available to help patients and help patient care. So that, that's one of the things that I think if you want to go into radiography, it's a very good career. Um, you have very, there's many options. You can always move from CT to MRI, etc. You're always playing with million pound machines, high tech equipment. So it is a very fascinating field. Thank you very much, Mohamed. When you become a doctor, are you going to be a radiologist or are you going to be an anaesthetist? Oh, uh, I'll hard leave, question, man. I'll leave that one up to the viewers. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I think you'll make a brilliant radiologist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Very good. Udara, what do, what do you like to say? I mean, you've been an, uh, what, what did you do? An electrical engineer. I said, why, how come you uh, chose radiology? Okay, I got, you've got half a minute to talk about that. Yes, I mean, the radiology is the most... Uh, for me, like most uh, technical of the medical specialties. And as I said, it deals with the anatomy, which I loved, and musculoskeletal radiology deals with sports injuries, sports, I love sports, uh, and uh, all these combined uh, to influence me to select this specialty. And uh, every day I wake up with a smile on my face because I, I, I love it. And um, uh, the, uh, the cases that we see, the patients that we can help, it's very diverse and uh, most people uh, get better with, with, uh, with treatments and uh, we help them by diagnosing uh, what's wrong with them because pain can be very distressing uh, and um, we help them uh, by diagnosing what's wrong and help other clinicians by diagnosing what's wrong with their patients. Uh, so it's a very uh, satisfying uh, uh, career to be in. I recommend it to anybody uh, who's thinking about a career in, uh, in radiology. Udara, thank you very much. It's an amazing program. In short time, we have given exactly what they need to know about uh, radiology, what radiology can do for joint pain, back pain, knee pain, whatever you name it. And uh, Mohamed, thank you very much for your expertise on the field and uh, you, you, you told us from your side what you guys do. And for all of you, we talked today about uh, joint pain and what radiology can do for us. And uh, Thank you very much, Udara, and thank you, Mohamed. Thank and you. thank you all of you for being with us for this special program. This will be uploaded in the YouTube probably uh, tonight or tomorrow. Don't miss out Health Talk with Dr. Akram, YouTube, and uh, you could go there and watch all these programs there, and you can leave your comments there, and we'll come back to you and reply you. Anyway, for Thank you for staying with us in Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram. If you have any further questions, please email us health talk with uh, health talk at iontv.co.uk or you can message us on uh, our dedicated YouTube channel, Health Talk with Dr. Akram, or Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We'll come back to you as soon as possible. But don't forget, next week is really important. We're going to talk about vaccine. So if you're, going to, if you're waiting for COVID vaccine, don't miss out next week. Okay, thank you very much. Look after yourself, guys. Thank you.